Ticket Machine is the official ticket broker of Spartan Nation. No matter what you need a ticket for, border to border, coast to coast, the Ticket Machine is your ticket source. So whether you need to get into the hottest concerts, the best sporting events, you want the best seats in the house, or you just want to get in the door, when you want to go to any event that requires a ticket, anywhere, border to border, coast to coast, it's always theticketmachine.com. Theticketmachine.com, 517-655-3201. Check it out today at theticketmachine.com. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Spartan Nation Radio. I have said this for years, and I still maintain it. One of the things that I love about what I do for a living is the opportunity to meet really amazing human beings, great people, whether it's athletes and coaches, all of it. And I have said for years, it's no secret on this program, that one of my favorite people I've met in this business, who I truly consider a friend, this is a guy I could call at 3.30 in the morning, anywhere I am in the country, and say, listen, I'm, I have an emergency. Can you help me? And I know he would, and I would him. He is one of the best journalists out there. Nobody, nobody covers Northwestern better than him, period. That's why as soon as I joined Scout, I told the Scout people, you got to get this guy over to Scout. He did not. He stayed with Rivals, but he still is absolutely terrific at what he does at the Wild Care Report. And this is how you people addressed it last week. Within 10 minutes of the game being over, I got three emails. Here they are. First from Kristen in Sterling Heights. Kristen says, great win over Indiana. It's now Louis Vicar week. The next email I got, <laughs> which I thought was really, really funny, came from Tim in Mount Pleasant. Tim said, Hondo, I realize you have to cover the win over Indiana. I'm just excited about having Louis Vicar on. He's my favorite guest you have on your radio show. Very excited about Northwestern week. And the last one came to us from Sarah and John. Sarah and John live in Bellevue, Michigan. Sarah and John both said, great win over Indiana. Celebrate it. Northwestern's on the clock. We want more. Bring on Vicare. So let's do it. Louis Vicare from the Wildcat Report. How are you, buddy? Well, I'm a lot better now. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. It's almost like a fan club. I really appreciate uh, those people reaching out, and I always enjoy hearing your intros because you make me sound so much better than I am, Hondo. Well, Louie, first of all, I want you to know you are one of my favorite people on earth. I genuinely really care about you. You're a terrific man. You're a great person. You, I'm friends with several families who have um, uh, uh, children that play at Northwestern who I've said to them that when, when they asked me, what do you think about going there? And I said, I think it's a great choice, but you got to buy a subscription to Wildcat Report. Every no, I, But you know what? I, I'm friends with four families who have t kids on the team who are subscribers of yours, and I told them to. And I just think I think the way you do it, you cover them right. You're not, a, you, you know, you definitely want them to do well because it benefits your bottom dollar, and you should. By the way, that's not a slam, sure. but at the same time, you're not a fanboy. You're not afraid to be critical. I love it. I think you're one of the best guests we have on, and I appreciate your friendship. Well, I appreciate it, too, and I can say the same about you. I uh, consider you more than a colleague. You're definitely a friend, and uh, I always enjoy talking to you. And, you know, Michigan State Week's always a good week. It's a fun one. All right, Louie, um, I told you this years ago. I am done rooting for Northwestern, and I love Fitz. But every time I get high on them, I get my heart busted. So here's the story on Northwestern. You know, they are 4-3, and 2-2 two and two in the conference, Give me not an offense or defense, just a bird's eye view how the seasons went so far. Well, I tell you, it's been a, I would say overall, it's still been a kind of a disappointing season. You know, they uh, they got off on the wrong foot. They, they, they looked pretty shaky against Nevada in the opener. Then they went down to Duke and got destroyed. That was a that was a tough day. That was an ugly afternoon for Northwestern. Um, they beat Bowling Green, which is a pretty bad team, so that didn't really say too much. And then, you know, they got into the Big Ten schedule, and who did they have the first two weeks? Or Wisconsin and Penn State. So they went out there and got hammered pretty good. The offense didn't look uh, good. They've got a solid defense. The offense is sputtering. You know, they, they do well some games. You know, running running the football is the key for them. When they can run the ball and stay balanced, they usually do pretty well. So they got drubbed those first two Big Ten games, and people were calling for Fitz's head, and they wanted Mick McCall, the offensive coordinator, and Adam Cushing, the offensive line coach, fired and everything. And 
Well, they turned it around. You know, they went on the road and beat Maryland, and then Saturday they had their best win of the year so far, taking down Iowa at home. It was a hard-fought, tooth-and-nail defense battle, but they managed to get the win in overtime. So things are trending up. You know, I think that early season schedule, though those first two games out of the gate in the Big Ten really kind of soured everybody, and everybody was looking at impending disaster. But uh, now you got the win over Iowa. They've won two in a row. They got Michigan State. And then after that, you know, they could conceivably win out. I don't think there's a really tough game on the schedule after this weekend. So they could end up with a pretty good record. I think, though, overall, I would call it a little bit of a disappointment. I really thought this team could contend in the West this year, and uh, it's just not going to happen. So, Louie, I've got to ask this question. Because you just said something, and this is why I love you. You are an ambassador of truth, which is what I try to be. Did you really just tell me there were people calling for Fitz's head? Oh, yeah, on my message board, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it happens every week. I'll tell you what, it, on Saturday, I don't know if you saw the end of the game. There was 90 seconds left. There was a wind howling uh, out of the south at Ryan Field. And Northwestern was going against the wind with 90 seconds left, tie game 10 to 10 at their own 25 yard line. And Fitz sat on the ball. You know, he didn't, uh, try to take any shots downfield into that wind. He didn't want to go, uh, you know, throw the ball and then have to punt into the wind and give Iowa field position. So he just sat on it, went to overtime and they won the game. And people were going crazy, social media on my message board, blasting Fitz, calling him gutless and a coward. And the guy won the game. He made the decision that won the game because they they outplayed him in the second half. He thought their defense was – his defense was playing well and their offense moved the ball better than Iowa. So, to me, it was like, yeah, let's play. I want to go overtime. I'll take my chances with that with them trying to hit a big play because Northwestern's offense is not built for a big play. That's not them. So, to me, he made the right decision and got blasted for it. The guy made made the good decision, won the game, and still got blasted. It was crazy. Unfreaking believable. <laughs> All right. So let's continue. We're talking to Louis Vicare from the Wildcat Report. You should read Louis. Um, listen, I am a proud member of Scout. I, I love the folks at Scout, but Louis Vicare does a great job. He's the Rivals guy who covers Northwestern. You can find him on the old uh, Twitter at, at Wildcat Report. He does a great job or WildcatReport.com. So let's dig into the offense. If Northwestern wins this game on Saturday, obviously they scored more points. Well, what's going to be the storyline on offense? Well, they're going to have to run the ball. You know, that's been the key for them. When the running game gets shut down, and if you can contain Justin Jackson, they're going to have a hard time. And that's one thing that, you know, teams like to crowd the line of scrimmage. They'll drop safeties into the box, and they'll take their chances playing man on the outside. Northwestern doesn't really have a deep threat that scares you on the outside, so they take their chances with that and try to subject them. So a lot of times they have to make some plays in the passing game to kind of loosen things up for Jackson. But once they, you know, if they can stay balanced, they, they will, they could, you know, they can be a productive offense that can score enough to win. But if you can stop that running game, you know, and make them throw the ball and their offensive line isn't very good at protecting Thorson either, you know, they're going to have problems. Well, I'm going to tell you this. They're not going to – Michigan State, their defense is legit, Louie. This is the best defense they've had oh, yeah. since the year they went to the Rose Bowl. They've held the last two opponents. Now, remember, think about who those opponents are. Under 100 yards – excuse me, the last three under 100 yards. They're absolutely legit. So I think this this game yep. – comes. so if I said to you, this game comes down to Northwestern's ability to win it on their quarterback's arm, do they win or lose? That's a good question. I, I think that's what's going to happen. I, I really think that because I, w I would say the same thing about Northwestern. They have shut down, or I, I won't say shut down, but they contained Jonathan Taylor, Wisconsin, and Saquon Barkley of Penn State, yep. Ty Johnson of Maryland, and they held widely under 100 yards on Saturday. They've got a very good run defense. They're going to put it in Brian Lewerke's hands to beat them, and I think that's what Michigan State's going to do. They're going to put it in Thorson's hand, and whoever has the better game, is the one that's going to win. On, on Saturday, Thorson took care of the football. He didn't turn it over. Northwestern didn't turn it over, and they won the game. And I think I think we could see a very similar game. You know, Northwestern and Iowa tied 10-10 at the regulation, I, at the end of regulation. I think 
we could be looking at another game like that, 17-10, 13-10 kind of game. I th- that's what I think uh, could be coming because both teams are good defensively and kind of shaky offensively. All right, let's turn now to the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, if Northwestern wins, they're not going to have given up as many points. But what's the storyline on Wildcat Report about the defense if they win on Saturday? Well, they're going to do what they've done a pretty good job of all year, and that's uh, stop the running game. They're going to sell out to stop the run, and Northwestern's got a pretty good, pretty stout defensive line. You know, and it starts with their tackles, Jordan Thompson and Tyler Lancaster. they got a couple good guys there. And then Patty Fisher, the starting middle linebacker, has been a revelation. Redshirt freshman stepping into Anthony Walker's shoes, and he's been spectacular this season. Um, and in the secondary, you know, they feel pretty comfortable leaving those guys on an island when they have to. Montre Hardage is a very good cornerback, and Godwin Ike is one of the best safeties in the league. He's a guy that's going to play on Sunday. So, you know, they're they're very stout defensively, and I think they'll be able to contain Michigan State's run game, and it's going to be up to, you know, getting pressure on Lewerke and whether Lewerke can make the plays to win the game. How's your special teams? Uh, special teams, I tell you, your your buddy Hunter Nicewander. Did you see that eighty yard punt last week? That was something. Okay, I don't. Um, he's I, he's been. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, um, I'm saying he he's been he's had a good year. Hunter Hunter's had a real good year punting the ball. I think they're uh, they're kicking games in pretty good hands with uh, Charlie Kubander, who's a true freshman, and uh, he's a guy that uh, has a really bright future ahead of him. I think he's going to be a heck of a kicker for him. Um, um, the return games, nothing to get too excited about. You know, that's not really Northwestern's game. Riley Leeds is a punt returner that uh, he's a guy that can make things happen. He's a mature freshman. We've just seen him start to get some opportunities now. So he's a guy that, uh, you know, he has some potential in him. But uh, overall, there's not a lot of big play capability from uh, the special teams. So here we go, Louie. Da 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 The moment everyone's waiting for. What's your prediction? Well, you know, I think given what I've seen out of Northwestern's defense, I think they're going to contain the ground game, put it on Lewerke's shoulders. I am I think Northwestern's going to win by a field goal. I'm going to take the Cats, the home team, uh, in, in an upset. I'd say maybe 17-14 kind of game. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game and uh should be a good one. I think it's going to be a good game. How about he, you? What do you think? I don't know yet, but I I don't know yet. I want to see a couple things in practice this week or get some information out of practice before I make a pick. He is the great Louis Vacare, Wildcat Report, on the old Twitter, at Wildcat Report, on the interwebs, wildcatreport.com. Know him, love him. He's the best. Just absolutely love that guy. We'll be back.